because we want to know who we are in connection with who God is. And so we sing songs about God and to God so that we can figure out, hey, wait a minute, this is who I am. This is my purpose in life. And he tells her, I am, or in other words, I'm God. And I showed up to be with you. I'm God, and I got your back. I'm God, and I'm, I'm, I'm by your side. I'm God, and I'm always present with you, even when you don't think that's what's going on. The story closes. She gets it. Something inside her head and her heart clicks, and she is chomping at the bit to get back to Just then his disciples came and they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said anything, because you don't say anything. And that's a good thing. You can think it, but don't say it. That's what the disciples were going through at that moment. I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. And then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city and said, Come and see. I love that. Come and see. Leaves her jar, leaves everything there. And so I'm thinking, and can we assume, can we assume that that water jar that she left at the well, something that we probably looked over, it probably seems pretty significant, insignificant to us, it's pretty significant that she left her water jar there. I wonder, and I'm going to assume, that when John wrote those words about that story, that there was significant it, there's something significant about that water jar, so much so that she left it there, and maybe we can assume, if we're to bridge the gap there, that maybe she left behind everything that she, she ever believed about herself. Maybe she left behind the assumptions that people made about her. Maybe she left behind the labels that she either, either gave herself that, that she, there must be something wrong with me that so many people have abandoned me in my life, or there must be something wrong with me for this to happen in my life, or something must be wrong with me for me to experience this kind of thing in my life. And maybe she began to label herself, or when she looked in the mirror, she saw something that wasn't what God was seeing. So she left, leaving me behind what was, to move ahead to what would be, and who she is in grace. And so in that grace, she discovered who she is. And so here, in verse 34, at the end of the story, the disciples come back, they offer him food, and he's like, no, nah, I don't want any food. And they're like, what, somebody already gave you food? And he's like, no, my food is to do the will of him who sent me now, listen, you understand food's really important. Super important. Chrissy, um, last night, had this unbelievable idea that she would get a pork shoulder and she would throw it in the oven at 6.30 this morning, so she diligently woke up at 6.30 this morning smeared some stuff on it, I don't know which, I only found what was left over in the sink, and she threw this thing in the oven, put oil on it, so that when we got home today, and I was watching the Eagles game, I could eat something. Jesus said something significant, food is to do the will of him who sent me. What nourishes me? God's purpose in my life. So the most important thing for him at that moment was her. The most important moment in his life and his purpose was her. This woman who was hurting because of the labels and the assumptions that were being made about her so that she could experience life and walk in the way of God and said, you can walk in my way and so that she could walk in his way and experience life. all the other stuff. Without the labels. Without the assumptions. Without believing something that God doesn't believe about you and believing 
who God created you to be is exactly who you are. So maybe we can assume that God's will in our lives or purpose is for God to complete the work in us that we may know who we are in him so that we know what our purpose is and experience that grace. Here's the tricky part, though. For us to experience that grace, that means we have to kind of give something up. To experience that grace, we have to give up what we believe about ourselves. To experience that grace, we have to kind of take a step and say, I can't believe what everybody else is saying. I got to let go of the labels. I got to let go of the assumptions. I got to let go of this and that and believe what God says about me. I'm made in the image of God. You're made in the image of God. For us to believe that means that we can find and discover purpose, which then also means that we can live life abundantly, but first we've got to give up. And surrender those labels or those assumptions about who we believe we are and not what God believes that we are. When I was in Haiti um, last year, well, and over the last couple of years, women, wherever they were, they would go get water at the well, at the local well. And the water that they would carry would be in buckets just like this. And they would take this bucket and put it on their head. And they would walk home with that bucket on their head because they were the ones who would go get the water every single day. That would do everything that they needed to do to provide for their family. And so they would walk home with buckets like this, exactly like this. The woman, the unnamed woman, female, Samaritan woman went to the well and left a bucket just like this behind. And what that represents is that bucket of assumptions and labels that were in her life so that she could experience the grace of God. I believe that we have labels. That when we look in the mirror, that we see ourselves defined by this label. And this label has defined who we are throughout our lives. And so when we react to situations in our lives, we react out of that label, that place in our lives, there's assumptions that other people have made on, to us, and we believe that about ourselves, and then that tells us who we are. Jesus is saying, that's not who you are. You're more than enough, and I love you. And you're not who you believe you are. You are who I said you are, and you're made in the image of God. But I think first we need to get rid of labels, whatever those labels might Maybe the label is, I'm not good enough. Maybe that label is, well, you did this wrong, so you're defined by that circumstance or that mistake in your life, and you'll never, ever get out from underneath that. You're defined by whatever people say about you, and that's wrong. Jesus said, you're defined by my grace. So this morning, as the band plays, who am I? You'll have the opportunity to come to the altar. You want to pray. You want to spend some time there. You want to write down that label. And you want to take it and you want to crumple it up and you want to throw it in the bucket and leave it there. This is our act of worship this morning. This is our opportunity to take what was there and say, I'm not going to do it anymore. Leave it in the bucket. Leave it behind. And so that you can return to life and living. Stand with me. Who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt? Who am I? 
Let the bright and morning star We choose to light the way Of my ever-wandering heart Not because of who I am But because of what you've done Not because of what I've done But because of who you are I am a flower quickly fading Here today and gone tomorrow A wave tossed in the ocean A vapor in the wind Still you hear me when I'm calling Lord, you catch me when I'm falling And you've told me who I am I am yours. I am yours. Who am I that the eyes that see my sin would look on me with love and watch me rise again? Who am I that the voice to come and see would call out through the rain and calm the storm in me? Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading Here today and gone tomorrow A wave tossed in the ocean A vapor in the wind Still you hear me when I'm calling Lord, you catch me when I'm falling And you told me who I am I am yours I am yours. I am yours. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I am yours. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I am yours. We're going to pray, and we're going to let God do whatever God needs to do in our lives. So let's pray. God, sir, thank you and praise you for God, for who you are. Now, God, take us from here in the, in, um, in that living water, that grace, to remember who we are in you, that who we are in you defines who we are in finds our purpose, which is to share grace with others. So God, we pray this in your son's name. Amen.